Hey folks, welcome to Ask Leaps Thursday. I'm Matt Lieberman. I am sorry that this video is so late. Normally, I try to shoot all the videos over a weekend uh, so that I'm not doing them every single day because it's hard to fit it in, but here we are. So, uh, I got three emails to read. I'm gonna get through them as quickly as I can while still giving uh, the optimum amount of care to each person. The first email is from a Libra friend and he writes, Hey Matt, I'm just going to get right into it. I'm a junior in high school and I've realized for at least part of the past year, for at least the past year that I've wanted to go to film school, but my parents are pretty adamant about me going to law school. Um, I haven't told them about me wanting to go for a film degree and I feel like they will look down upon me or otherwise, especially because my dad has previously commented that people who go to film school are too bad at anything else to get a real degree. Please help me in any way that you can as I feel like a career in film is something I can really pursue if I put my mind to it. Thanks in advance. Uh, well, first thing, and we'll get to your parents in a second, you don't need to go to film school to be a filmmaker. This is the best time ever to become a filmmaker because the cost of entry is so fucking low. And honestly, the things that I learned in film school that have helped me the most aren't things that I learned in a classroom. I learned them from being on set and just making shit, running into a problem head on, figuring out how to solve it, and then over time, figuring out ways to deal with those problems faster and easier. So don't feel, even if you don't wind up going to film school, don't feel that that's the end of your dream, because it's not. You don't need to be in film school to be a filmmaker. Law school, you need to go to to become a lawyer, but it doesn't work that way with filmmaking. There are so many courses online. You can just go out and make shit. You have a phone, don't you? Do you have a phone? Shoot shit on your phone. It doesn't have to be the greatest shit in the world. It's your first thing. So just go and start making stuff. Don't wait, don't wait for someone to tell you you're a filmmaker now, because they don't no, and their word doesn't fucking matter. All that matters is what you make and what you wanna do. So go make your stuff. Now, in regards to your family, your dad previously commented that people who go to film school are too bad at anything else to get a real degree. I'll give your dad a couple of these, because I went to film school, um, and uh, I'm not even doing what my fucking degree was in. My degree was in directing, and I'm doing nothing of the sort. Um, too bad at anything else to get a real degree. That is a really narrow point of view. My my parents wanted me to go to film school versus say uh, theater school, which is what I wanted to do because there are so many job opportunities in the entertainment industry um, that having a film degree, having some training in it, you know, you could get a job as an editor, as a producer, um, as a writer, whatever. It doesn't have to be a directing job. Now, if you wanna make movies, I mean, go make movies. And fucking, if you wanna tell them that you wanna to go to film school, tell them. I feel like on, on some level, there will always be a part of you that is upset with yourself for never voicing, hey, mom and dad, this is the life I wish to lead. Even if they poo-poo it, even if they shit on you, even if your dad is super shitty about it, fucking say the words, listen, I wanna be a filmmaker, I wanna to go to film school. And even if I get a degree in law, I will still want to be a filmmaker. If you send me to law school, I'm telling you right now, you will be wasting your money because I don't give a shit about the law, Dad. I don't care. And do you really want to bring up yet another passionless desk jockey? or fucking passionless attorney. If I'm working in criminal law, wouldn't my clients want to be working with someone who actually gives a shit about the law and saving my life? I would think so. You're with, well within your rights to tell them what you wanna do with your life. And guess what? Disappointing your parents is not the end of the world. Only you get to decide how you wanna spend your life. And if you don't wanna spend it doing law, you don't have to. Now, if they say, well, that's all fine and good, but we don't want you to go to film school because we think that that's not a real degree or it's not gonna help you get anything, I mean, they're kind of right. Getting a film degree is not gonna help you get more film jobs. It's not. The only good thing about going to film school is you get access to equipment, but you have a film studio in your pocket. So don't worry if you don't wind up going to film school. Even if you go to school for accounting and just you learn a skill that is, you know, kind of mindless but easy to accomplish that people will pay you to pay you to do for them, that's great. 
You have a source of income while you work on your movies. So don't worry about film school. You don't have to worry about disappointing your parents. All you should worry about is, when I look back at my life, what choice would I have wished that I had made here? And I think that it honestly is to communicate and to pursue my dreams at any possible cost. Now, your folks are paying for school. I do not advise taking out a bunch of loans to go to film school. It will backfire on you. If they're willing to pay for college, go do undergrad wherever. Even if you are pre-law, it doesn't matter. Go get your degree, go to college, learn, try to learn and get a specialization in something that you actually wouldn't mind doing just to make a living. And all, all that time, you can be making your shit. Uh, I remember there was a show called On the Lot, which was supposed to be like American Idol for filmmakers. Um, it was a really terrible show. But one of the guys on it, he was a Wall Street banker for like... 25 years and then he was like I fucking hate this I want to make movies and he started writing and selling some scripts and making shorts and then he wound up on that show no there is no one path to being a director so don't worry about having to make all the right choices right now one of the big uh holes that I got myself stuck in when I was younger was I need to be I need to break records I need to be the first to do something I need to be the youngest to do something you don't. Just cool down with the pressure. Do what makes you happy. Try to lead a life worth living. I hope that helps. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this email is from a Libra friend. Hey, Matt. I'm having kind of having a bit of a crisis. I came out as bisexual to a friend because I thought it was no big deal, but now I'm questioning everything. I know I don't have to justify anything to myself, but I'm try I find myself trying to do so. It's gotten to the point where I'm questioning my attraction to my boyfriend and if I'm still romantically attracted to him. I don't think sexuality is that big of a deal, so I don't plan on making an event of coming out if you can call it that. I feel trapped in my decision to even put a label on myself and don't know what to do. Any input would be helpful. Um, here's the thing, Lieber friend. You didn't put a label on yourself. You can view it that way. But honestly, what I see bisexuality as is kind of a rejection of labels saying, listen, I'm not, I'm not heterosexual. I'm not homosexual. I am attracted to both sexes. I can be whatever I want. You have the ultimate freedom. Don't let using a word once to describe yourself derail your whole life. Just because you have feelings for men and women doesn't mean that your relationship with your boyfriend is invalid. It doesn't mean you're not attracted to him. If you really are wondering whether or not you're attracted to him, maybe that's a deeper issue that has nothing to do with whether or not you use the word bisexuality to describe yourself. If you're not attracted to your boyfriend, then maybe you need to think about whether or not that relationship is worth staying in. But don't let that get you down. And you don't have to have a dramatic coming out as bi. I mean, you could just start dating a girl and if someone's like, you're dating a girl, be like, yeah, I like girls too. It's not, a, it's not that big a deal. You yourself say, I don't think sexuality is that big of a deal. It is as big of a deal as we want it to be. And if you don't want it to be a big deal, if you think that that gets in the way of you living your life, then it's not a big deal. It is just you. You are you. You are Libra friend. I, 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 you didn't say I could use your name, but just like, you're, you are just you. You are not bisexual. Uh, you're not bisexual, heterosexual, homosexual, polyamorous, monogamous, whatever it is. You are just you. And you are great. You are beautiful. You are special. You are unique. So don't get into this fucking societal and never ending need to label ourselves to feel like we know who we are. You know who you are because you are you. Don't let a word get in the way of it and don't use words to define yourself. We are all undefinable. We, there is no word. If I were to define me, I would define myself as Matt Lieberman because there is only one of me. Do I sometimes fall into the trap of like 
like I am this, I am this, I am this. Sometimes, I, I, it's hard when you're wrestling with other people who need things defined, who that gives them comfort. There's a comfort from knowing the boundaries of what something is and what something isn't. I know that this is a rock. I know that it is not a sandwich, but a person is not a rock or a sandwich. A person is a person and they contain multitudes. So try to relax. You are fine. You are okay. And just because you tell one person that you're bisexual doesn't mean that your relationship is invalid or that you have to be dating a man and a woman. Not that that's what bisexuality means, but you get what I'm saying. I think, I hope, I pray that this word is just a word. Do you like men and women? Yes. Does that have to be a thing? No. You just are who you are. Come out as you, fully formed. This is who I am. I have all of these feelings and they are all genuine and legitimate. I hope that helps. Final email of the day. Okay, so this is from a Libra friend and this is kind of a rough email. So um, just, yeah. My boyfriend and I were planning on getting married, but he broke up with me recently. I don't want to regret meeting him or the experiences that we had. We had an amazing relationship while it was good and I want to remember it fondly, but I can't stop feeling angry when I think about it. I had a miscarriage, but couldn't tell him about it until the day he broke up with me. Now he won't talk to me. I can't stop this anxiety. It's overwhelming. I don't want to deal with school. I never want to be alone because it makes my anxiety worse. Sometimes shows, songs, movies, different objects, basically anything can trigger the anxiety and I never know when it will happen. I can't look at any couples or hear about relationships without in feeling intense anxiety. This is interfering with my life too much. I've gone through breakups before and have been fine. I'm sure people get over miscarriages easier than this. I don't even want a child right now. I, I don't know what to do. I want to move on. I'm trying to focus on college and improving myself, but whenever I'm alone, I just think about dying. I don't want to die and I'm not going to kill myself. Death is just always at the back of my mind. I don't know what to do. I'm really sorry. I'm so, so sorry. It's an awful thing that happened to you. Death is a part of life. I understand that, that's logical to me, but you can't. Try not to be too concerned about how hard it is to get over. And I know that feels like an impossible task or like a ass backwards piece of advice, but you've gone through a trauma. There is no regular timeline for going through a trauma, especially one as painful and physical and emotional as losing a baby. Not that you even wanted it, but don't discount what you've gone through and allow yourself to mourn. It's okay to mourn. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to feel anxiety. You witnessed firsthand life's impermanence, and that's a lot to take in. Again, I'm so sorry. I've said before on this show, and I, I, I'm cribbing it from the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, but it's just good advice. Try to take life right now, 10 seconds at a time, because you can do anything for 10 seconds. It's survivable. It's brief. It happens over and over again. I understand that what's going on is interfering with your life and it's making it hard to live it well. That's normal. There is a need when you experience trauma 
to rest yourself from it as quickly as possible so you can get back to your life, get back on track. I need to get back on track and continue to make my life happen. And that's true to an extent, but you can allow yourself to grieve for your relationship, for this child that never came to be, for having to experience it alone and his reaction to it, um, which is really disheartening to hear about. Know that you have us to lean on. Um, and you're doing the right things. You're trying to focus on college and improving your life. That should never stop. But it's okay to allow yourself to grieve at the same time. Know also that what happened happened and it's not happening still. It, it happened, but it's over now. You're not going to have to deal with that again. Not like this. Not alone. Not with this guy. I can understand why you're anxious. I wish I had more words to say. Because I feel for you so much right now. Just when the anxiety comes, you know what it is, breathe. Know that you're not in danger. Know that you can handle this. Know that you will be okay. Just take a second and breathe. I am okay. What happened to me happened. I can't make it go away. I don't have to run from it either. I can accept that it happened and that life will improve. It may take some time to get back to a place that you can comfortably call normal, but you will. It's not a possibility, it's an eventuality. Continue to focus on making your life a happy and full one and a successful one. Continue to put the work in. Don't hide from your life. And I don't think that you will. But you don't have to. And you don't have to feel guilty for feeling how you feel. Everything that you feel is natural and is exactly what is supposed to happen. Continue to push forward, and in time, all the work that you're doing won't feel like work. It will just be your life. I wish you all the luck in the world, and you keep writing to me if you have to, if you want to. Lean on the Libra friends. Thank you so much for writing. All right, folks, that's going to be my show for today. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, Libra Friends hang out not tonight, but on Saturday, and I will post the <laughs> straw fall in the description this time. It's actually, it's right there, right now. It's, it's there. I know. I know, I know, I know. And I'm terrible at keeping promises. It's right there. As the last time I looked at it, people were very much in favor of 3 p.m. Pacific Standard um, for Saturday's hangout. Um, just keep an eye on that straw poll. Whatever's winning, that's what it's going to be. So, uh, and I'll tweet out when I know for sure. I love you all. You're my Libra friends. I value you so highly. And I hope that you have a wonderful Thursday and Friday. Be well. I'll see you Saturday.